students, and welcome to this week's Live IELTS classes. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Central Europe. Hi, Kyber. Good to see you in the class. Hi, Anna. Nice to see members. Welcome, Ramin, and many of our other students. Chris, thank you for joining. In this class, we are looking at IELTS speaking part one, and we're going to talk a little bit about how to master that perfect score, that band nine. Of course, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Please check us out there. For the general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. That's generaliltshelp.com. On both of those websites, we have lots and lots of help for you. This is a speaking class, so make sure to speak and repeat. So copy my intonation, my pronunciation, uh, keep up with my fluency, my speed as well. Uh, students, our websites look like this. Definitely check them out. <clears throat> AEHelp.com has this blue background. You can click that big red button to join the premium package. We are an official IELTS registration center in Saudi Arabia, and uh, we are certified British Council agents as well. Uh, welcome, Carolina. Happy to have you here. All right. Um, our general IELTS looks like this green background. Click that big red button to join us there. And when you join us, you will have a My uh, Student account that you can click on to access all of your materials. And I'll show you where you can practice your speaking for free. So if you click on this uh, student partner speaking uh, button, then you will open up another window and you will find some other students to practice your speaking with in video chat or audio chat with questions. We have Hassan, Shri, and Mehmet in here right now waiting for somebody to chat with them. I'll close that up so that somebody doesn't call me while I'm teaching. And we'll get right back to our lesson. I just darkened up the screen. Let me brighten up our lives here a little bit. All right. I know many people use that speaking function. Make sure to use it uh, regularly and uh, you will improve. Practice does make perfect. Uh, of course, we have apps for your mobile phones. Get Academic IELTS Help app, link it to aehelp.com. General IELTS Help app links to gieltshelp.com. And if you have questions, um, just send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. Okay. All right. So uh, let's get into some speaking. We have lots of classes this week. You can check out the schedule on our YouTube community board as well as on our Instagram profiles. Uh, let's just warm up a little bit here. Make sure you're speaking, not just typing. And then I will give you some tips on what you need to do for that band nine mastery. Okay, so uh, you're going into your IELTS exam. You get to the exam about 45 minutes to an hour before. They tell you to be there at least 30 minutes before, but I suggest even more so you can just practice, really get comfortable, use lots of English, uh, and focus, not be distracted by other parts of life. Um, here we go. So you walk into your exam, and your examiner will say, welcome to the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. I will give you instructions for each of the three parts, and I will record this for marking purposes. Um, may I see your identification? Let's start with that one. Usually they will ask for your identification before your name. Uh, these days, so they have it beforehand often, before the speaking, so they don't have to contact or they'll just show, they'll ask you to show, like, can you show me your identification? And then you can hold it up. So let's start with that one before the name. I know many of you are jumping the gun here, but let's start with, may I see your identification? Okay. And then I'll go back to the name one. Okay. Uh, Nasir, send me uh, your writing tasks uh, through the website by clicking on the task one, task two green buttons. 
All right, Honey says, of course, here's my ID, which I used to register for IELTS. Not two IELTS, Honey, four IELTS. Okay, Onisim says, yes, of course, this is the passport I used for registration. Uh, yeah, Onisim, that's okay. This is my passport. It's yours. Be possessive. This is my passport that I used for registration. Uh, Yarabisha, be specific. Sure, here it is. I used this for registration, not I used it, but instead I used this for registration. Kyber says, yes, here's my passport, which I used for registration. Please uh, have a look. Very good, Kyber. That works. It's nice and clear. Okay. Mahmoud Anna Jainil, some good answers there as well. Uh, Sandeep says, sure, here's my passport, which I have used for registration. Uh, please have a look. Yeah, it's Sandeep, not bad. Don't overdo it either. Okay. So may I see your identification? Certainly. Uh, here is my passport that I used uh, during the online application process. Uh, please have a look. Okay, great. So let's do a little bit of repetition. Again, work on fluency, intonation. So those nice intricacies and nuances of the language. Uh, here we go. May I see your identification? Certainly. Here's my passport that I used during the online application process. Please have a look. Lots of different ways. It's good to say this in a nice fluent way because that reminds you to be fluent during the speaking section. Okay. So I know some students say, oh, I just want to say yes, sure. Or yes, here you go. That's fine. Um, but, um, use this question to remind you that this is a formal interview and you must uh, be fluent and give complete answers. Okay. So I think that's one of the really good reasons to just give a, a well-rounded answer for this very first one or two questions, um, because it helps you to remember, yeah, this isn't just a chit chat. This is an interview where I have to show my best English. It's, um, I'm not sure if anybody knows this idiom, but, um, well, you'll learn it now. Uh, put your best foot forward. Okay. So this idiom means um, to I'll uh, put a note here just in case. It's an idiom. Uh, it means to present your uh, best self ability performance. Okay. So in the IELTS uh, speaking, you want to put your best foot forward. All right. That's really important. Uh, again, do lots of repetition. So even when I say new idioms like that, you want to repeat that. Okay. All right. Uh, Joe Keir says the speaking examiner is subjective. Yes and no, Joe Keir. So um, it's virtually impossible to be objective for writing and for speaking assessment. That simply doesn't exist in any language, any part of the world. So yes, uh, in some sense, Joe Keir, you're right. Speaking and writing are a bit subjective in the marking for sure. However, uh, there are standards for quality professional communication that IELTS examiners are trained to identify. They have marking criteria, they have marking rubrics. So most students will not be more than half a band apart with different examiners. Okay. Um, and if you have a really big problem with your speaking score, you can always ask for a remark. It costs money. And then they send it to two more uh, examiners, the recording, to mark them independently and they take the average. So they do try to be as objective as possible. Keep that in mind. Okay. So it's not completely subjective. It's not like, oh, that examiner thought it was an eight. Oh, that one thought it was a five. Uh, not quite. Okay. Not quite. There's a lot of training 
and standardization involved. All right, so again, uh, make sure to put your best foot forward, okay? Now, uh, here is the next question. Uh, what is your full name? So they have your ID, they're looking at it, they're looking at you, making sure that you're not a doppelganger, somebody who looks like you that speaks good English that's been hired to perform. And then they'll say, okay, what's your full name? And uh, Sandeep says, my first name is Sandeep and my family name is Yadav. Please just call me by my first name, uh, Sandeep. Okay, very good. Nice. Uh, so again, nice and fluent here. Be natural. Practice different ways before the exam so you can really sound natural. Bahrat says, my first name is Bahrat and last name is Sharma. Please just call me by my first name. Yeah, that's good because you've already said what it is. Um, Last is Sharma, my last name. We wouldn't omit the subject there, Bakrat. So my first name is Bakrat, my last name is Sharma. Okay. Jahangir Ksayadarov says, My given name is uh, Muhammadamin and my surname is Tursunov. Uh, please just call me by my nickname, John. All right, yeah, I, I had a bit of difficulty pronouncing your name, no offense. Uh, definitely, if I were your examiner and you said, please just call me John, that would put me at ease for that 15 minutes, um, for sure. So thank you, and that's good, yeah, see a nickname for sure. Uh, why not, right? It's only for uh, the 15 minute interview. Jian says, my given names are Chao Lun and my surname is Qian. Please call me by my English nickname, Titan. Thanks. Um, okay, yeah, I think the thanks is maybe a bit overzealous, uh, Titan, but sure, you could say that, okay? All right, so I like how it's original, definitely, okay? Uh, Beck says, Adrian, I've got a question for you. During these questions, what kind of answer should candidates give, positive or negative? Uh, Dovlad Beck, um, most of the time, if not all of the time, you should give positive answers because positive answers generate better communication, more fluency, more ideas. Giving negative answers is mm, tricky uh, because even if you give a negative answer, you have to show fluency. Remember, you're putting your best foot forward. So you're using professional communication. In professional communication, you shouldn't just say, no, I don't. Because in professional communication, we look for depth. So your, um, your counterpart or your listener is thinking, well, why don't you? Or what is it that you do instead of this? And that's more challenging to do than to just give a positive answer and say, yes, I do because of this. And here's an example. Okay, so positive is definitely better for questions than negative. All right, keep that in mind. Okay, um, so what is your full name? My given names are Jessica. Um, let's pick another girl's name here. Uh, Maria. Uh, and my family name is Drodes. Let's go with a Polish name. Um, please uh, just call me uh, Jess for short. Okay. Um, so here's a typical kind of answer. I'm choosing a girl's name this time. Uh, what is your full name? My given names are Jessica Maria and my family name is Drodes. Please just call me Jess for short. Okay, Jess, uh, here is your identification back. Um, now I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic uh, for part one. Um, what is uh, your hobby? Okay, so what is your hobby? Uh, now everybody, I'm sure has a hobby or two. So give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Samandra says, I always read science books and I also often do extreme sports uh, once in a blue moon. 
okay, uh, Samandra, if I'm talking to you in this case, I would love to know what kind of extreme sports like um, rock climbing, skydiving. So you should include that, Samandra. So uh, a better answer would be I always read science books. And once in a blue moon, I like doing extreme sports like bungee jumping or skydiving. Uh, just the other week, um, I went rock climbing with some friends. It was a really great excursion. That would get you a much better band score. Okay. So full answers, everyone. Full answers. Um, think about it this way. If you're the listener, if you would have a question like what extreme sport, your listener has that question. Okay. Kyber says... I have a couple of fun pastime activities, which I engage in. The first one is uh, reading books, which I enjoy a lot. I read about 50 books a year. Uh, right now, I'm into a self-help book uh, called uh, Looking Into the Future. All right, Kyber, good. Just throw in that smooth example, okay? And the second one is cooking. I love to share good food with others. I made a lasagna for my family just last week. Okay, so again, Loop into those smooth examples. Maya Ilmaz says, To be honest, I'm not so good at it. I can only play simple songs like You Are My Sunshine and Old MacDonald Had a Farm, but I practice every day to get better at it. Uh, Maya, I think you're on to a different question. Um, I'm not sure which one, uh, but uh, you have to be careful to give accurate answers. Okay. Nancy Kumar says, I have a lot of hobbies. I'm a travelaholic as I love to explore new places. Apart from that, I'm a melomaniac as music soothes me. Last but not least, I cook in my spare time. Okay. <laughs> All right, Nancy. Uh, some nice use of vocabulary. Make sure that you can clearly and fluently express yourself. Okay. Honey says, I love to read um, personal development books like John C. Maxwell and I like to play table tennis with my friends. Last week on the weekend, I went to play some ping pong for a couple hours. Honey, you can paraphrase table tennis and call it ping pong. Okay, table tennis, ping pong. Yeah, it's a fun sport. It's fast paced, it's good exercise, and it's very exciting. All right. Abhishek says, my all-time favorite hobby is to collect different currencies in paper notes as well as coins. Apart from this, I like to hit the gym and watch flicks on Netflix. Uh, in fact, last week, I um, brought uh, one rupee coin from a virtual exhibition. Brought or bought. Careful, Abhishek, with your verb and also careful with missing verbs. Hit the gym and watch flicks. Verb agreement, very important in speaking for clarity. Okay. All right. Carolina doing a fantastic job on helping me. Thank you, Carolina. Um, Rashika says, I like painting in my leisure time. I spend two to three hours uh, painting abstract art. I have a series of um, paintings uh, that I use to color from my childhood. Um, and I like this collection. Okay, Rashika, I think you're uh, at near the end. It's a bit confusing what you're saying. So careful not to over speak. Okay, limit yourself um, to make sure that you have clarity. All right. So what is your hobby? I have a few different um, past time activities that I like to engage in, kind of like what you said, um, Kyber, right? And uh, that's a really nice way to paraphrase it. Um, I uh, like to do uh, yoga as well as watch uh, nature documentaries. as these help me learn about our amazing planet and relax at the same time. Uh, just yesterday, I got into a new series uh, called 
um, green earth. Okay. Uh, so here we go, students. Uh, what is your hobby? I have a few different pastime activities that I like to engage in. Uh, I like to do yoga as well as watch nature documentaries as these help me learn about our amazing planet and relax at the same time. Uh, just yesterday, I got into a new series called Green Earth. Okay, I'm not sure how yoga helps me to learn about our amazing uh, planet, but why not? Maybe on a spiritual level. Um, okay, and um, notice this little idiomatic phrasal verb here, I got into. Uh, in the IELTS, you do not need to use some really complex uh, phrasal idioms, okay? Like, um, uh, don't throw bricks when you live in a glass house, meaning don't be a hypocrite. You don't need to use these very complex type of idioms. You just need to use some natural, simpler types of idioms that will help bump up your lexical research score. So I got into a new series called Green Earth. Okay. Uh, get into means that you engage. It's actually the idiom for this word engage, which means to actively do, to actively participate. All right, uh, students, so now at this point, the examiner will say, okay, uh, let's talk about singing. All right, so they're going to um, get into this uh, this kind of general topic, let's talk about singing. Most people should be able to have a bit of a conversation about singing and songs. Uh, and um, before we get into these questions, let's just take a minute here about the right attitude in the IELTS speaking section, okay? Having the right attitude in the IELTS speaking interview uh, for band nine mastery. Okay, that's the, the topic of today's lesson is mastering that band nine. And before we get into these kinds of questions, I wanna just talk a minute about having the right attitude because I think a lot of people aren't clear on what they should do. And that one question we had at the start of class was a really good one. Should I give positive answers or should I give negative answers? So. Uh, that was a good question. So let's take that as the first note. Um, you should be thinking about answers from a positive perspective uh, because it is easier to talk about doing an activity than not doing an activity. Even if uh, this may not be true, okay? So today's topic is a good one because not everybody is big on singing, okay? Uh, some people are just not singers. They feel that they don't really have the voice for it or the hearing for it. I know I'm not uh, the most... Uh, <laughs> a talented singer in the world myself, um, although I like to sing, and, um, and some people may not be into singing. Uh, however, it's a really bad idea to think, oh, I'm not into singing. This is going to be terrible. Uh, what should I do? Okay, so how many people are not into singing that are in the chat right now? So how many people are like, oh, I'm not that big in singing. It's not something that I do. In fact, I'm embarrassed when, when I sing. So anybody like that here that, you know, doesn't like singing? Okay, let me know. Because, yeah, so Utsav says me, Santa has a little kind of sad emoji as well. Uh, honey says me, Ifran says me, uh, Un says not me. Um, yeah, so uh, Apira says it's not my cup of tea. Kyber says I don't like it, I'm shy. Yeah, so that is kind of the sentiment for many people, obviously. However, on the IELTS exam, if this topic came up for part one, um, I would definitely be very careful and not immediately think, uh oh, this isn't something that I do. I'm just gonna say no to every question. That's not good. It's gonna be a conversation stopper, 
Okay, so you should be thinking about answers from a positive perspective because it's easier. Okay, so for example, I think we can all imagine that we're amazing singers because we like to. Um, so imagine that you are an amazing singer. You are uh, Michael uh, Jackson or uh, Mariah uh, Carrie, I believe is how she spells her name. Um, okay, uh, I'm sure that we have, or most of us, have uh, fantasized about being amazing singers. Okay, um, so another question back at you. Have any of you, especially those who said you're not big, big into singing, have you ever um, fantasized about being a good singer? So have you ever imagined that I can't sing good? Here I go. And maybe some of us secretly in the shower or somewhere actually try to be that amazing uh, singer, right? So Jahangir says, yes. Thank you, Jahangir, for being brave and admitting to that. Um, Gursawak says, yes, I sing a lot of songs. Okay, so uh, it's probably better here to be um, kind of in this imaginary zone where you feel that you are a great singer. You're really good at it. Carolina says, yeah, in the shower. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Honey says, yes, I sing while I'm alone. <laughs> Dublin says, I'm a rapper. Very good. I'm happy about that. So that's what you want to do, right? So you want to imagine that you are because you're going to generate better conversations. Okay. So, um, Giving uh, no or I don't know answers are often conversation uh, stoppers and lead to lower band scores because you are not showing true ability. Okay. So your goal here is to get a high band score. Now, for that, you need to be confident, okay? So just a couple more points here, and then we'll get into the questions, I promise you. So the right attitude for IELTS speaking is A, confident, uh, B, energetic, uh, C, positive, D, imaginative, and E, communicative. Okay. Um, remember, you paid good money to be there, so do your best, okay? Um, and keep your eyes on the prize. Okay, don't get discouraged, okay? Uh, the examiner's there to do their job, you're there to do your job, all right? So this is the right attitude. You wanna be confident, energetic, positive, imaginative, communicative, okay? So remember, you paid to be there, okay? You don't have to be subservient, you don't have to be like, oh, thank you, I'm sorry, oh, thank you. No, you're there, do your job, okay? All right? Okay, uh, so let's get into this a little bit. We'll practice giving answers, explanations, and I would love to imagine that all of you who are practicing at home right now, repeating these sentences and answering nice and loud, you're practicing confidence and good, positive, uh, expressive English, okay? Here we go. So let's talk about singing. Uh, do you like to sing? Why or why not? Okay, give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. So, do you like to sing? Why or why not? All right. So, Titan says, yes, I do. Singing helps me to unwind. In fact, I work as a freelance actor and a, a professional backing voice vocalist in Taiwan. So, it's lucky that my interests can be uh, a part of my job. Very nice, Titan. Very nice answer. Okay. All right. 
So answer these questions specifically for me, okay? Uh, Sandeep says, yes, I love singing songs when I'm traveling in my car and I'm always humming songs all day when I'm um, doing chores at home. Uh, Sandeep, avoid the word something. Instead, choose a better word. Something is a what thing? Something is a chore like vacuuming or uh, doing the dishes, okay? All right. Um, let's see some more here. Maya says, yes, I love singing. I think this is an amazing activity because it helps me to get in touch with my feelings when I'm feeling down. Uh, singing sad songs helps me to get my emotions out and happy songs are a great way to keep me cheery on those bright and sunny days. Maya, very nice. Okay, give some examples. Notice, students, how these positive answers are really good. Okay. Uh, Jainil says, no, I'm just a bathroom singer. Well, when I'm taking a bath, I like to sing Bollywood songs uh, without rhymes and tuneless. This morning, I have uh, sung a song about the movie Jap Tak Hai Jun. It is Chala. Okay, Jainil. Good. So, Jainil, instead of saying no... Um, say, uh, yes, <laughs> because it sounds like you do like to sing. So, uh, you don't want to give conflicting information, right? So yes, but I'm just a bathroom singer because you are singing in the bathroom, right? So I like how many of you realize that why not just start with, yeah, I love singing. Okay. Notice how many of these responses, Prashita and Lepe and uh, many others that I read, you're all starting with, yes, I love to sing. That's a very good, positive way to begin. Lepe says, yes, I love singing very much. I enjoy uh, going to karaoke with my friends at the local club once in a while. I love it because I find it a really good way to relieve stress when I chant to a microphone and an audience, right, Lepe? Um, I love singing uh, uh, Eye of the Tiger from Survivor or Circle of Life from Elton John. Anything that's just full of emotion. Okay. <laughs> All right. Lead and go into examples. Very good. Okay. I can't read the Cyrillic, but I'll read the comment. I definitely enjoy singing uh, for a couple of reasons. Firstly, music helps me get in the mood for what I'm doing. Another reason is that songs help me to study languages. I'm big into uh, English music and I sing lots of Mariah Carey, uh, Michael Jackson, um, Michael Bublé, just to name a few. Okay, roll into those smooth examples. Okay, definitely. I really love to sing whenever I get the chance. Uh, not only because it's a great way for me to enjoy life, but also I find it uh, wonderful to uh, entertain my friends. I uh, go out uh, to a karaoke uh, bar every uh, few months and just have a hoot of a time uh, singing classics uh, with my mates like uh, great balls of fire. <laughs> All right. So uh, really getting into it. Um, great balls of fire. All right. Let's talk about singing. Do you like to sing? Definitely. I really love to sing whenever I get the chance, not only because it's a great way for me to enjoy life, but also I find it wonderful to entertain my friends. I go out to a karaoke bar every few months and just have a hoot of a time singing classics with my mates like great balls of fire. Uh, mates, Australian English, but we all understand it, means friends. Uh, great balls of fire is just a smooth flowing example. And have a hoot of a time is idiomatic language means to have a lot of fun. 
Okay, have a hoot of a time, because hoot, hoot, you're having a hoot of a time. Okay, um, so next question. How often uh, do you sing? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. And uh, remember, qualitative and quantitative language. Okay, so how often do you sing? Okay, Juan Pablo says, I sing every day with my uh, baby niece. I sing to her baby and children's songs. Yesterday I sang uh, Baby Shark and the dog called Bingo for like 30 minutes. Juan Pablo, very good. Yeah. Baby shark, do, 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 baby shark, do, do. Yeah, I got it. I got a four and a half year old Juan. Yeah, B I N G O, B I N G O, B I N G O, and bingo was his name. Oh, I got you. See, I got you. All right, Kevin says, I'd say at least twice a day, I often sing only one or two lines because I can't remember the entire lyrics, and sometimes there are high notes which are beyond my vocal range as well. If my parents or friends are around, I'll try to keep it down because they often say my voice is appalling, like crows crying. Aw, oh, Kevin. Very nice English, Kevin. Very, very nice. Uh, notice the beautiful vocabulary that Kevin's using. So Kevin says, I can't remember the entire lyrics. Very nice expression. Uh, I can't hit the high notes. Kevin is often how we say it. I can't like great balls of fire that I tried there. I can't hit the high notes, which are beyond my vocal range. Very nice use of English. Um, and uh, yeah, crows crying, I get it. It's a nice uh, simile, um, but uh, I'm sure it's not that bad, Kevin. Okay, uh, so <laughs> let's see. Uh, Vaishnavi says, I often... Uh, sing, I would say every day when I get bored, singing helps me to get out of the bad mood. Whenever I f feel I know the song, I start singing along with it and uh, I don't miss this. Okay, Vaishnavi, careful with your word choice and your grammar. I like your ideas, but you have to work on your grammar and word choice, okay? Uh, Tanya says, I sing from time to time. It mostly depends on my mood. I sing when I need to cheer myself up. Uh, Tanya, give some uh, quantitative uh, answer as well. Okay, so I would say maybe two, three times a week on average. Okay, that will really help to boost your score. So you always want clarity. Okay, so um, I sing all the time. Every chance I get. I would say that I sing at least a couple of times a day, whether it's nursery uh, rhymes with my young daughter or humming along to the tunes on the radio, I find myself uh, singing regularly. Okay, so uh, here we go. Uh, repeat after me. How often do you sing? I sing all the time, every chance I get. I would say that I sing at least a couple of times a day. So qualitative language, again, moving to quantitative language, that's just the pattern strategy that's really good to master in your communication. Quality, quantity, quality, quantity, quality, quantity, okay? So uh, keep thinking like that, especially when you hear this how often type question, okay? For the how often type question, always think quality, quantity, quality, quantity, okay? So quality, quality, okay? And then quantity, okay? So quality, quantity, okay? So quality is subjective and quantity is objective numbers. 
Some people feel that singing all the time is just once a week. Some people feel that singing all the time is once every day, all right? So uh, you want quality with quantity in your communication. Um, when do you sing? Okay, so different types of questions. Uh, make sure to be ready for that. So when, who, where, if, have. Uh, you have to train yourself to give the right types of answers. They're looking for your grammatical range and knowledge. Okay, so when do you sing? Uh, Pachu says, as I said before, I sing songs in the evening uh, because I have free time uh, to relax and enjoy the rhythm and melody of songs. I usually listen to music by Justin Bieber and uh, Ariana Grande. Ariana Grande. Ariana Grande. Um, good, Pachu. Good. I like how you're making a connection there. Okay. Uh, Saurabh says, I love to sing every day, I think, but if I could count, then I think about an hour to 20 minutes and 30 seconds. <laughs> All right. It's good to um, exercise my mind. All right. Uh, jazz. Subjective means that it's up to individual opinion. Okay. Thank you, Roman. Uh, Mahmoud says, I sing usually at the daytime at around 17 o'clock, three times a week. And uh, after I finish my work, as I mentioned, uh, singing helps me to relax. Okay, Mahmoud, good. Give me a little bit more, Mahmoud. Like, are you singing at around 17 o'clock because that's when you're driving back home from work listening to the radio? Okay, so um, I often find myself uh, singing at around uh, 5 p.m. when I'm driving home and listening uh, to the radio uh, or um, in the late evening uh, while I'm putting my uh, daughter to bed with a uh, la 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 lullaby. If we check the spelling on that, lullaby is those uh, lullaby. There we go. Uh, with a lullaby. Uh, and on the weekends at times with friends, as I had uh, mentioned before. Okay, so making that connection. All right. So clarity, you're always reaching for that clarity. So Mahmoud, if you're being very specific, like 17 o'clock, that's fine. But why are you that specific? It's after work. And what's happening at that, that, that time? Is that the time that you're usually hearing music or that you have some time to sit in traffic and just sing? Yeah, it's definitely better than getting angry at people. So, you know, sit in the car and blah, 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 start singing. All right. Um, so when do you sing? I often find myself singing around 5 p.m. when I'm driving home and listening to the radio or in the late evening while I'm putting my daughter to bed with a lullaby and on the weekends at times with friends, as I had mentioned before. You could be singing at birthday parties or celebrations, at weddings as well, right? So again, positive answers. Humans sing. We like to sing. Okay. All right. Uh, Bakrat says, I find myself singing a song early in the morning when I go to take a shower. Also, uh, entertaining my mom when she's cooking and making food for my college classes. Good. Okay. Mula says, actually, I have a favorite band instead of one person called Linkin Park. R.I.P. to their singer, by the way. Uh, Mula, yeah, I got you. But uh, careful to not express personal opinion in the uh, real exam to the point where it becomes unclear. Okay, Many examiners might not be familiar with Linkin Park. Um, and uh, if you say R.I.P., you should say the full um, acronym rest in peace, right? 
Okay. Uh, Prob Collar says, well, my favorite one is uh, Gurdas Man, who is a Punjabi singer. I think some of you are jumping questions here. Careful. Uh, Ramneet says, I usually sing songs when I'm alone at home and no one is listening, but I'm not that bad at singing. I can sing all day um, if I could. Okay, Ramneet, I'm not sure where you're going there with that last idiom. It doesn't make sense, but be careful. Okay. All right. Um, so here we go. Next question. Who is your favorite singer and why do you like this person? Who is your favorite singer and why do you like this person? A nice full answer. Asham Angas Gatti says, my favorite singer is Arijit Singh, a Bollywood singer. I adore him because his voice is full of emotions and his style matches with my personality of being broken. All right. That's uh, okay. It's a little bit depressing, but I got you. All right, Kevin says, aside from their incredible vocals, okay, I think, Kevin, you're jumping the gun here too and have something beforehand. Let me see if I can find that. Uh, Kevin says, my favorite male singer is Bruno Mars, a young, talented African-American singer-songwriter who won an armful of musical awards, including a Grammy, and my most loved female voice is Ariana Grande. Mm-hmm, Okay. Ariana is my daughter's middle name, so good. Ann says, my favorite singer is Ed Sheeran. He is a British songwriter and singer. He is renowned for his beautiful songs, which are full of sentimental values, meaning for lyrics that have inspired many people. Uh, Sandman says, actually, I do not have a favorite one. I just like all kinds of songs. It doesn't matter who the singer of the song is. I just need to pass some quality time with their cheerful songs. Uh, Sadman, that's not a good answer, even if it's your honest opinion. It's better to think for a second and then just give an answer, okay? So uh, I don't really have one favorite singer either, but I could just pick one and go with it. So uh, my favorite singer is Elton John, uh, Sir Elton John, I should say, Sir Elton uh, John, uh, who is um, both a singer, songwriter, and a pianist. Uh, his lyrics are extremely meaningful and his songs are full of emotions. It is uh, no surprise that he has been uh, knighted by the Queen of England and has scored some of the most famous uh, movies such as The Lion King. Is it true that he's my favorite singer? No, I think his songs are good for sure. I wouldn't say that he's my absolute favorite. I've got lots of favorites, both from his time and more modern times as well. Um, but I'm just kind of picking one because I can produce better language than just saying I don't have one favorite singer or while well, there are lots of different singers that I like. Eh, maybe truthful, but not good for my IELTS band score. So uh, who is your favorite singer? Why do you like this person? My favorite singer is Sir Elton John, who is both a singer, songwriter, and a pianist. His lyrics are extremely meaningful and his songs are full of emotions. It is no surprise that he has been knighted by the Queen of England and has scored some of the most famous movies such as uh, The Lion King. I also love um, jazz, the blues. Uh, so I've got lots of favorite singers um, that I could go with. Billie Holiday for a very famous uh, female jazz uh, vocalist, for example. Uh, but I just pick one and then go with it. I'm sure many of you can come up with just one 
male, female singer, and then go with that. Okay. So again, that's what you want to focus on. And you want to have this kind of positive attitude going into your speaking exam and really focusing on the questions. All right, I've got a few more questions here for you. Where is the best place to sing? If you could learn to sing a song perfectly, which one would you choose? And have famous singers become better today than those in the past? Uh, you can practice these last few questions with some speaking partners on our websites. Uh, remember what I said, that you have this uh, speaking partner uh, function once you create an account and log in to your my student account at aehelp.com or uh, gialtshelp.com for general alts uh, and you can practice with other students there of course i will be back with more lessons tomorrow uh, at this time so make sure that you are here i will be doing uh, task two starting with members a little bit earlier and then a reading ielts lesson uh, with everyone else. So thank you so much uh, for all of the students who participated and you put your hearts out and you shared uh, some of your thoughts around singing as well. Thank you members for being in the class. And again, uh, don't be shy. Visit our websites. If you have a question, write me an email. Uh, spend a couple dollars. Uh, save yourself a lot of stress and time uh, and study with good materials from our websites and our apps. It's definitely worth the investment. We help thousands of students every day to succeed. Uh, much love back at everyone else. And uh, hopefully I'll see you tomorrow. I'm Adrian signing out from Budapest for now. Bye.